Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I glorify you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, because you gave me this opportunity to serve you, Father. I thank you, Father. Use me, Father. I pray that the congregation is encouraged, Father. I pray those who are online are encouraged, Father. In the name of Jesus, and I pray this is an on-time word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So the, me- the title of the message that I have is, There's No Such Thing as Inflation in the Kingdom. And subtitle, God Always Provides. It seems like with inflation, the price price goes up, but your money stays the same. This is also true in the kingdom. The prices go up, but God stays the same. The same God who provides, the same God who supplies all our needs, the same God who increases. Amen? Turn to 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7. When you have it, say amen. Amen. And it says, one day the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, my husband who served you is dead. And you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creator has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elijah said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her, and the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left over. See, this woman was in debt to the point where they were going to take her sons away from her. So she went to Elijah for help, and he told her what to do. Not only was she able to pay her debts, she even had some left over for herself. We too are like this woman, at times in desperate need, but instead of her trying to figure it out on her own, she went to Elijah for help, and that's how we have to be. Instead of trying to figure it out on our own, we need to ask God for help, and he will give us the strategy to get out of the situation we're in. Amen? Amen. Turn to 1 Kings 17, 8-16. When you have it, say amen. amen. Okay, and it says, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Zar- Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks. And he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, Bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and the little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook that this last meal. And then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you, you said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in the containers. Just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Turn to Mark 12, 41 to 44. Mm-hmm. 
When you have it, say amen. And it says, Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called to his disciples, disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions, for they have a tiny part of their supplies. But she poor she poor as she is has given everything she had to live on amen notice how both women gave everything they had to live on both women were obedient and sacrificed all that they had and because of this god noticed and honored them for their sacrifice there may be a need in your life and god is telling you to do this but you're looking at what you don't have god didn't ask you what you didn't have he get, said, give me what you do have and watch what I do with it. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessings in the he heavenly places. Confess this with me. God has blessed me with every spiritual blessing. I don't have to wait until heaven to experience the blessings of God. The Holy Spirit is blessing me today. And today I walk in the blessings and favor of God. So if God has already blessed us, why are we walking around with a defeated mindset? Amen. Amen. Turn to Matthew 14, 13 to 21. To give a little background of this story, Jesus just found out John the Baptist was beheaded. And this is what Jesus' reaction after hearing this news. If you have it, say amen. And it says, as soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to, re to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, he, that even the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it is already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the village and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they an answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples, who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. See, the disciples were looking at the natural. They were looking at what they can see right in front of them. But Jesus was looking beyond the natural. While the disciples were looking at the problem through the natural eyes, Jesus was looking at the problem through the spiritual eyes. When we look at our problems through natural eyes, we get discouraged. But when we start looking at our problems through spiritual eyes, we get encouraged. Turn to Exodus 14, 5 to 29. When you have it, say amen. Okay. It says, when the word reached the king of Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds. What have we done letting all these Israelite slaves get away, they asked. So Pharaoh harnessed his chariot and called up his troops. He took with him 600 Egypt's best chariots along with the rest of the chariot chariots of Egypt, each with his commander. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so he chased after the people of Israel, who had leapt with fists raised in defiance. 
The Egyptians chased after him, them with all the forces in Pharaoh's army, all his horses and chariots, his charioteers and his troops. The Egyptians caught up with them, caught with the people of Israel as they were camped beside the shore near Pia, yeah, Pat, whatever that word is. Okay, <laughs> of course, some Bel Zephon. As Sarah approached the people of Israel, Pharaoh approached the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we still in Egypt? We said, Leave us alone. Let us be slaves to Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than corpse in the wilderness see people rather stay in their problems instead of going forward because it is a little hard but Moses told the people don't be afraid just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today the Egyptians you see today will never be seen again the Lord himself will fight for you just stay calm then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops and chariots and charioteers. Where my glory is displayed through them all. All Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. Then the angel of God who had been leading the people of Israel moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptian and Israelite camps. As darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and Israelites did not approach each other all night. See how God is keeping the enemy away? So the people can get out. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea. The Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground. When the walls of water on each side, then the Egyptians, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and charioteers, chased them into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. That's what God would do to your enemy. He will make them confused. He won't know what's, they won't know what's going on. He twisted their chariot wheels, making their chariots di difficult to drive. Let's get out of here. Get out of here, away from these Israelites, the Egyptians shouted. The Lord is fighting for, for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, the Lord said to Moses, Raise your hand over the sea again. Then the waters will rush back and cover the Egyptians and their chariots and charioteers. So as the sun began to rise, Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the water rushed back into its unusual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but the Lord swept them into the sea. Then the waters returned and covered all the chariots and charioteers. The entire army of Pharaoh, of all the Egyptians who had chased the Israelites into the sea, not a single one survived. But the people of Israel had walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground, as the water stood up like a wall on both sides. Moses went to God to help them escape Pharaoh, and God was like, Why are you crying out to me? Just do what I say, and he he made a path for the Israelites to escape. When the circumstances in our life are rushing towards us, we start to panic and cry out to God. And God is saying to us, why are you crying out to me? I've already made a way for you to get through this. Amen. Turn to Exodus 10, 21 to 23. You have it, say amen. So at this point, Pharaoh would not let the Israelites leave Egypt. And so God made it so that there was plagues all throughout Egypt. And one of them was the plague of darkness. And in Exodus 10, 21 to 23, it says, 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand towards heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days they saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for their three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. The Egyptians were in total darkness, so I'm sure they were panicking. But, cho- but the children of Israel had light, so they didn't have to panic because God was with them. With what is happening with inflation, in the inflation situation, the people in the world are panicking. They don't know what to do, but the true believers of God are not panicking because we know God is with us and he will never leave us nor forsake us. God is our source and the only one we need. We all heard of the of Bank America, where well, there's Bank of God, where there's always a cash flow, there's never insufficient funds with unlimited interest, where all the Bank of God requires is a deposit of your faith, your obedience, and your sacrifice. One thing about the Bank of God is that you always have access to him. Even if you have an hour before the rent is due, the car payment needs to be made, or your bills have to be paid. The bank of God is always open and comes through in the nick of time. And another thing about God is that he will make a way for you to be successful in anything you do. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Remember the Lord your God. He is the one who gives you power to be successful in order to fulfill the covenant he confirmed to you, your your ancestors, ancestors with an O. There, there's plenty of books out there giving us 10 steps to be successful, but you can see there's only one step to success, and that's trusting in God, the God Almighty. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Amen. There are things God wants to give us and wants us to know. Number one, he wants to give us peace. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an, an expected end. Number two, he wants you to prosper. Third John 1, 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Number three, he will reward your labor. Psalms 28, 2, you will enjoy the fruit of your labor, how joyful and prosperous you will be. Number four, he will direct men to give unto you. Luke 6, 38, give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Number five, because of the blessing from God, we can consider ourselves rich. Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes a person rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Number six, he will give you over what you need. Malachi 3.10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take in. Try and put me to the test. Number seven, he wants us to stay planted in time of trouble. Psalms 1 3, they are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither and they prosper in all they do. Number eight, not only will he bless you, but your seed will be blessed. Psalm 112 1 3, and it says, Praise the Lord, how joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere, and an entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy, and their good deeds will last forever. And number nine, he will give us all we need. Psalms 34, 8 to 10, and it says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. All oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, fear the Lord, you his 
godly people, for those who fear him will have all they need. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. In conclusion, I know with everything going on, it's so easy to worry. But did you know that worry can make you sick? According to research, when you worry, when worry becomes excessive, it can lead to feelings of high anxiety and even cause you to be physically ill. I read something from someone named Todd Bishop who said, worry is a virus and there are symptoms that come with this virus, but there's also an antidote. The first symptom is worry says nothing will ever work out for you, but hope says God will provide all I need. Worry says I will not have enough money. But hope says God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Worry says I can't provide for my kids. But hope says God will provide everything that my kids need because he cares. Hope encourages and enables us to keep going knowing that God loves us. He is with us and he is for us. I am so grateful for hope. Without hope, there is no reason to wake up in the morning or to develop dreams for your life. Hope is the antidote to the virus of worry matthew 6 25 to 27 says that is why i tell you not to worry about everyday life wherever whether you have enough food and drink or even clothes to wear isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing look at the birds they don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are can can all your worries add a single moment to your life? So if he can do that for the birds, what more will he do for you? Philipp Philippians 4.19 says, But my God should apply all, my, all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we all know our God is the owner of everything. Therefore, if he has, we have. So stop worrying. If God be for us, who or inflation can be against us. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, because inflation has no part in this in your kingdom, Father. We glorify and we ask you, Father, to bless those, Father, in the name of Jesus. If they have lost their jobs, Father, bless them right now in the name of Jesus. The enemy will have not have control, Father. He thinks he has control right now in the name of Jesus, but we know you are in control of it all, Father. We know, Father, that you will increase us in the name of Jesus. You will give us the strategies to increase, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, government will not have a say in what happens to us in the name of Jesus. They have no hand on us. Hallelujah. The government is on your shoulders in the name of Jesus. They can't do nothing if you don't allow it, Father. In the name of Jesus, I know you are allowing this to happen for your glory, and you will get the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.